We have such a rock star lineup of people. It is going to be crazy awesome. Let's get my girl Summer in here. What's up, Bradley? I'm going to have you guys come up because I don't know if you can hear me. We can hear you. Oh, did you guys hear me the first time? Yep, singing away. Oh my gosh. We, I'm... we couldn't hear, and then you closed the room. <laughs> We we couldn't hear her. we couldn't hear Summer because she was on mute. Oh, it was Summer. I thought it was me, so I exited the room. I made her mod and exited, and then I thought I was like, "Oh shoot!" I just totally like, "Oops." Okay, Summer, you're back. Yeah. I didn't know you guys. Oh, hold on. I'm having technical difficulties. What's up, Bradley? What's up, everybody? I'm so, I, I'm so happy. Are you feeling better? I'm doing a lot better. Yeah. Yes, and you got some new ink yesterday from Timmy Tim Tim. Uh, I got to start to it. It's a huge piece, so we'll have to be doing a few sessions, but I'm stoked. Sweet. I freaking love Tim. He's so awesome. He's so rad. I'm glad you're feeling better. That's awesome. Okay, I made it. Sorry, I was having technical difficulties. I'm running no my computer. Um, to try and record and then I have my phone that I'm on so my husband is John and he is in the audience recording <laughs> what's up John is it but really he's... him or is it like no pseudo no it's me no it's okay me. that's my thought I just have him um on my computer so I have his profile logged in on my computer so I can record it so sometimes that gets a little bit tricky but it's because i had my i had to reboot my computer so but everything's good hello everyone yes, Hi, there we go we're good doing good happy happy friday and happy you know what it is the fourth week you guys embrace yourself this is the fourth week of adhd rise wait isn't it monday yeah you said happy friday did i i meant i don't know what i meant <laughs> You met Happy Monday. Happy Monday. <laughs> I was like, Wait, is it really Friday again? Yeah. No, Happy Monday. Happy Monday. This is the fourth bad, week. Right? This is you the say, fourth Ariel? week, though. I'm not on balance enough, but then Val's like, Happy Friday. <laughs> I know. Damn it. All right, I that would do straight that too. derailed my whole universe. I was like, What? It's Friday already? Oh. I thought the same thing. I was like, Awesome. <laughs> I actually I'm... checked my watch. <sighs> I'm causing you guys so much confusion. So, okay, I want to pose something to you guys while we wait for Jocelyn. We were literally just in the other room together. But um, so do you believe in coincidences? This will be our question for Monday. Whoever wants to hop up and answer this, please, please, please come answer this. Um, coincidences, because it's really funny. Uh, last week in a room, Ari said something about the city. And I was like, what's the city? Being my West Coast little Oregon girl. I'm like, what's the city? And he's like, look it up. And so I looked it up. And then no joke, I'm talking to my friend in New Jersey. And he's like, I think you need to come to the city and just work here. You know, because I'm like, oh, I don't know, all these things. And I'm like, what? And then no joke, who is then I'm talking to one of my clients. And she's like, you know, I really think you would love New York, you should come to New York. So three times in a week, I've heard that I need to go to New York, and I've never even been there. Oh, so girl. do you believe in coincidence? You need to go to New York. I don't know if it's your vibe or not to work and live there, but um, it's an awesome place to visit, and I loved it. So yeah, right. even if you go for a couple months. <laughs> well, I'm I'm the least New York that you'll ever meet. I mean, people from here, they basically call it like there's the people from here, and then everyone else in the world is from out of town. Right. And I am like I am the out of town guy. That being said, I can't believe I'm quoting him because, well, at the time I used to pay attention to what Rudy said. And he basically said, being a New Yorker is a state of mind and not a function of where you live. And um, and that's very, very true. Ooh, you know, I like and, that. And, and it's very, mind. very true. A state yeah. of mind, not where you live. I kind of mm -hmm. like that because I loved New York <laughs> I mean, it was obviously a vacation, but there was just, I love history and I love, I love learning about um, the past and like how it has formed like the United States. And there's so much rich history behind that. So um, 
I really loved it. So even if you just go visit and you're like, this is awesome. It's a state of mind. Oh, I love that. That's good, Ariel. Like totally. And I want to, for sure. Like my friend um, is so funny. She's a total New Yorker. She's like a defense attorney in upstate New York. And she's just like, so to the point. And I'm like, I swear, these are my people. That's why I love Boston. Because like people, you think that everyone's yelling at each other, but really they're just having like a normal conversation. And I think I would enjoy New York. I don't know. I've never been there. So it's like, I just, I don't know. I like that point, Val. I mean, honestly, that's a good point that you are like totally to the point and like, you're not like trying to offend anybody. You're just like speaking your truth. And New York is totally like that. And nobody pays attention to you. I'm a people watcher. So we're like literally rushing down the street. There's so many people, there's people running like downtown. And I seriously, I was watching people. I didn't get ever, I was there for a week. Anybody like actually look at me. So like everybody kind of minds their own business until you get in their way. So yeah, I, I think I would love that just because but, I, kind of my own but, like there's yeah. also like, like, again, I'm not in New York, like I am not new yorker at all you're and not at all I never the, i never thought i never thought i'd be living here and i lived in boston for 10 years and even there i was like that's as far as i'm going i'm not going to new york um and but when there's adversity like i've seen it i've seen it i saw 9 11 i saw it when we had the whole east coast blackout um you know i've seen it a bunch of different times um like New Yorkers really call us and, and the whole thing turns into this different place too. It's, it's very interesting. It really is. Awesome. So yeah, that's cool. I, I feel like, I feel like I have this calling to go to New York in the next couple of years, which is funny because I actually had considered it when we were looking at property in New Hampshire, you know, like, well, I could make the best of it. I have friends in Florida. I could go to New York. I could hang out, you know, do all these things, hang out on the East coast. But um, yeah, I don't know. I want to put money down, by the way, that Jocelyn found her keys, but then in the process lost her phone. Let's just mark the time. Oh, no. It's okay. 1240. But that's that's my prediction that in the process of finding her keys, which she this morning had lost, then in the process of finding her keys, she put her phone down. That's my prediction. Maybe. We were literally just messaging each other in the other room. But hey, Gathery. Hi. Hi, Val and Summer. Yeah, so we are talking about cities. Uh, I actually was born and reared, brought up in a completely packed city in India. Uh, and uh, I'm actually feeling much more peaceful here in a suburb of Dallas. <laughs> uh, but I do miss cities uh, for the fact, like Sama mentioned, like nobody notices us. It's so super important when we were, when I was born uh, among you know, uh, such a discriminated society. So it's so important to move out to the city, you know, uh, so that we can uh, camouflage and live in peace. So that is very important. Even though it's, it's so uh, ironic that it's so noisy and uh, crowded and uh, buzzing with energy and people, but actually it's peaceful and lonely. <laughs> and uh, I mean, peaceful and we can feel alone in our own sweet apartment in cities so in that way i like cities but i think i don't know just being a mom or something has made me look out for the suburbs it's more peaceful here right now so i'm here totally get that when i lived in the bigger city of course i was like in my addiction at the time so i was like kind of hiding out anyway like i think that's why i moved to the big city because i wanted to be able to like drink and do crazy things and not and get away with it <laughs> but yeah i felt more alone it's like you're surrounded by all these people but nobody ever really like makes eye contact or looks at you and i felt more alone even though i was surrounded by people i think that's why i mean i like little communities right like what we have here we have a little community so yeah guys we're talking adhd rise super excited oh, go ahead. so back to the so back to the coincidences yeah, and Kim, you guys both came up here. What do you think about coincidences? Ari, Kim. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 on not, I no, I, I don't really think there are things that are coincidences. Coincidences. I think things are autocorrelated, and 
once you're activated to hearing it, then you like, especially with ADHD, then you like, when you hear it again, you're more focused on it. Um, I mean, crazy shit happens to me all the time. And I'm always asking like, do I, am I a magnet for that? Just like a drama magnet. And I've come to the conclusion that it's, it's like autocorrelated with my ADHD. That's, that's my view. And I've been. Interesting. So your ADHD causes a, your, um, what is that called? Your thesis is that your ADHD causes a twister like thing that sucks in all of the chaos. Yeah. I mean, chaos isn't the right, the precise word for what I mean by crazy things, like just crazy, weird, wild things happen to me literally every day. And, um, and it's not always chaos, but, but yeah, I mean, yes, I'm, I'm correlated with higher risk taking and, and, you know, noticing things and being, you know, hypersensitive to things and, and what have you, but yeah, that's basically my thesis. Yeah. I love it. Oh, wow. Professor Ari. I actually, I actually feel that that is why I am out of cities. <laughs> it's coincidence or uh, whatever. Like, uh, I don't want to attract, uh, you know, uh, wild things, uh, because I, I am, I, uh, known for <laughs> risky behaviors, prone to risky behaviors and, uh, people who have known me in the past would like completely uh, disagree now. Like you are not the guy that I saw years ago. And it's like, yes, I am not because I have completely changed because I'm a mom and I'm like so cautious, like I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and uh, that is the exact reason I am. Uh, you know, uh, opting out of cities and moving to a much more private neighborhoods. And uh, and I, I think it's a choice. I don't know if it's a coincidence. Uh, uh, many people do that too. Like uh, maybe people with ADHD or not. Uh, many people do that uh, later in their lives, like midlife. Uh, or maybe, maybe it's just, uh, uh, you know, their past could have been kind of traumatic. They want more peace and, you know, I think that that could drive people out of cities. I don't know if I'm actually making sense while Tara is saying this, but uh, when you're talking about cities and the coincidence, I had a connection to this. Absolutely. And there's no coincidence in that, right? But see what I did there? So I want to say hello to everybody. We are in the ADHD Rise room. Right now, we are talking about coincidences. How does that show up in your life? And do you believe in them? Do you believe there's coincidences? For me, sometimes I say, is it odd or is it God? And then, you know, when those things, those commonalities keep showing up, like you keep hearing the same thing over and over and over in a week. I just heard three three times in the past week, starting with my friend Ari over here, um, that I should go to New York. And I'm like, man, I really need to go to New York. And then another friend was messaging me all these beautiful pictures. He's in Florida right now. And I literally went and looked up some flights because I am spontaneous and I wanted, you know, that's what I do. So I want to say hi to Susan. Hello, Susan. Hello, T. Hello, Dan. Neighborino. If you guys missed his talk, oh my gosh. Freaking go watch the replay. Go to ADHDrise.com. Get the replay access because it was fire and hello kelly oh, hi, <laughs> hi victoria jesse shawnee Johnny, matt and a jesse hi okay so real quick sorry val i interrupted you sorry but, not sorry uh, yes sorry not sorry of course so yeah so i worked all weekend to try and freaking figure out the how to well i already knew how to it just takes a long time to convert the audio to video so we can get it on youtube because you can't upload audio files to a lot of those platforms so i have converted all of the ones that need to be converted to video they have their cute little picture took me some time my husband told me the super easy way to do it that i didn't know existed that would have taken me uh, half the time oh, he's like just put it in the queue i'm like girl what the frick is a queue? he's like yeah you have all the adobe stuff just put them just prep them all and then you add them to a queue and it just does it he's i'm like oh my gosh anyways so now all we have to do is upload um all of the stuff from last week 
and uh, to YouTube and you will have full access. So I'm going to be doing that throughout the day because it takes about 12 minutes to upload each one. So yeah, we're almost like all completely caught up. So if you haven't, make sure you go to ADHDrise.com and sign up and then you will have access to the Facebook page and the replays that they'll have the link um for each replay on in facebook so yes so we're super excited about that that's very very exciting so back to coincidences val girl can i just say what a coincidence it was that you came in my life i know i know you guys i brag about this girl every single day but i just want to say how much i appreciate you and it's been a learning curve going from this um clubhouse platform into creating something that's like you can watch <laughs> on a video format because um yeah so it's been quite a learning curve we usually do our online events in a different platform but um i appreciate you and i'm so glad that you came in my life my oh, summer girl oh talk about coincidences talk i know about coincidences <laughs> yeah literally like things kind of just add up you know i don't i don't know like i okay wait I thought coincidences was like, oh, it's just a coincidence. It wasn't meant to be. Isn't that what Maybe. coincidence? Yeah. I mean, I've heard that like coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. Or I guess maybe the word might be serendipitous. Mm hmm. Yeah. You're my coincidence. Summer. Interest between the mining companies. Okay. Yes. So I think it, the people say it's no coincidence that you and I met. It was like meant to be. So yes. yes, you could you could look at it like two different ways, honestly, because it feels like they they mean the same thing. Awesome, yeah, totally. So I feel like it was no coincidence that you and I met, and we've developed like so many good things, like a friendship, really, like a working relationship. We actually work pretty slick together. It's kind of weird. We think the same ways. Sometimes we'll text each other at the same time, the same things, you know, and I've never really been in any type of a partnership before. And Val and I both are kind of like run solo our own thing. So it's been really good, a really good experience to be able to um, have that type of partnership with her and to, you know, live and learn. Like I've learned a lot. So it's been fantastic. And we've really just created some um, great connections and working with people and touching lives. Like we get DMs and texts from people saying how helpful stuff has been. And that's the point. That's what we wanted to do, both of us, at each end um, of our of our own work like what we do she's with entrepreneurs and um i'm with parents and so really adhd is affected by so many different things so we're so excited because when i rise you rise we rise together okay val back to you whoop, whoop. oh my gosh you're so romantic of course. where have you been all my life <laughs> <laughs> swoon me baby swoon me mr bradley i'm not sure if you can talk and you might be at work but do you believe in coincidences my my twin coincidental twin you already know that i believe everything happens for a reason and i believe everything comes in threes when it's supposed to grab your attention and you have three people tell you to go to new york so i'm feeling like you're going i think <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. That would be the one of the Holy Spirit telling you, I'm giving you a message. I'm still giving you the same message. All right. One more time for Val. I'm giving you the same message. Boom. <laughs> Funny story. Everything has to come to me in threes too. <laughs> I interrupted. Sorry. Funny thing is um, I'm sitting here at the same time. I'm like praying, God, just give me a sign what I'm supposed to do. And yeah, Wait, you're supposed you know. to come to Vegas. Okay, that's the big city. I live 20 uh, minutes outside of Vegas. You're supposed to come here. <laughs> P.S. Rolling the Stones are playing on. <laughs> Girl, P.S. Rolling Stones are playing on November 6th. Ooh, yeah. Brett Adler is already going with his brother who lives in Vegas. So I am trying to carve out that time right oh, now. Oh, girl. As we so much fun. Oh, that would be so much fun. Well, I mean, I would just get to see you. I wouldn't take over your vacation, but you totally yes, have a place would. if you need it. <laughs> I could you know, you. I would try to involve myself, my ADHD self, in everything that you do. Girl, I would be, be my friend. To... Be my friend. That would 
date me. <laughs> I would be see you. Whatever. You would be my vacation. Yes. Oh it my was goodness. So much fun. So much fun. Love it. So who else wants to go? Let's go to Vegas, guys. Rolling Stones. Let's do this. November 6th. You heard it first on ADHD Rise. It's so fun. Val needs a vacation. I it gets so freaking cold here yeah. in the mountains. It gets like 19 degrees. So I need a vacation. Yeah, I definitely don't miss any of that. I'm a Midwest girl. So coming out here was like heaven because I do not miss the cold. Hi, Kim. How are you? What's up? Hey. Are you so patient? Yeah, yeah. I've only just figured out how to use the unmute. Sorry. So You're I, fine. <laughs> are you I'm new? Uh, yes, fun? I'm new to here, but also new to ADHD. I oh. only found out in the last few months. So it's all fairly new. But when you're talking about coincidences, I'm a big believer as well about things are meant to be. Um, and you get signs from people. And weirdly, I've been saying this to quite a few people that over the last eight to 10 months, I've been seeing 1111 on my phone all the time. And it got to the point where it was ridiculous. I started screenshotting it where I was like, something big's going to change. I don't know what. I was just like freaked out. And then, so I was working with, I work with startups to help hire. And actually what I figured out is a lot of my clients are actually ADHD. And I was trying to improve the relationships with, you know, between their employees and them. So I was like, well, maybe I'll start doing some research, see if I can do this. And then I started working with some suppliers who were telling me they were ADHD. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. And then I kept seeing posts about ADHD on LinkedIn and then I ended up coming across um, a podcast with ADHD and women and then I suddenly realized I was like ah oh, sounds like a bit like what I've got and then I went to the doctors because I have PMDD to renew my subscription and she mentioned it before I did so I think sometimes the universe tries to tell you by the way you need to sort of shit out <laughs> or and also it gives you signs. And I think like someone mentioned that once you hear it, you're more aware of it where I've probably been seeing it everywhere, but because it wasn't in my radar, I didn't think about it. So yeah, so the whole world was just telling me I need to get tested for ADHD. So that's my story. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Oh. I love that. Like the new diagnosis thing is um, it's such a journey, especially as an adult. Like I was diagnosed when I was younger, but then as I got older, it, it meant something new and different, you know? So it gives a, it gives a lot of, I don't know, power and strength to who I am. So I mm. totally, totally get that. And Val, to Val, you should probably speak to that as well. Cause she has had that same experience. Oh my gosh. Seriously, Kim, welcome to the world of ADHD. And man, um, you know, we, we do kind of similar things. Um, I work with entrepreneurs and, you know, help them build out their structures and strategies to grow and scale their business. And, you know, that hand in hand piece of, of hiring out teams. And that was my exact same experience. Like, welcome to the world of ADHD, because I had actually had a client. Um, she's over in the Boston area and she was like, oh my gosh, I thought you just knew you had ADHD. Like, it's so <laughs> obvious. It's so obvious. And she has been diagnosed since she was like seven. And she said, I just Why thought you knew just didn't she talk about it. Right. Yeah. I'm like, how come nobody told me? But it is, it's so interesting when you start like opening up that world and realizing, and then like you come into this like camaraderie and connection of like a tribe that gets you, right? Like yeah, that was I felt my like experience. I was in my group of friends, I'd always right. think I was kind of the odd one, not the odd one, but I would get lost in their conversations. I think, oh my God, they're so intelligent. I don't know what they're talking about. And then when I started doing strengths coaching about four or five years ago, and I really love learning and doing stuff, people were going, oh, you're so intelligent. I was like, what? <laughs> Me? <laughs> um, because you just, you're a different type of intelligence, isn't it? And you think differently. And, um, and I just felt so, on my own for such a long time and I've had businesses my own business for years and I completely failed you know I was rubbish with money I was executive you know and now I just feel like it's that even though I did coaching for like five years and we did strengths there was always a piece missing going well why do I do this 
why can't I just be more organized? Why can't I be tidier? Uh, why can't I just make my bed in the morning? And she, uh, my coach was just like, just do it automatically. And I was like, well, I don't really care if my bed's made or not. Like, so I just feel like if I'd known this, it would have saved me thousands and pounds in coaching. Um, but yeah, I've, for 15 years, I've been working with companies to, to really strengthen their people strategy and experiences. But I just felt like I wasn't, there's, there was a piece missing again, like, well, why wasn't there that connection with people? Um, so the entrepreneurs and startups, they're like, always thinking of new ideas, like chasing the shiny penny, which I do. And then you've got people who really love the consistency and not the change who are like, oh my God, freaking out. And I was like, how do I make that stronger? So I think, yeah, people really need to know, don't they? Um, should be more awareness about it so people can identify if they have these sort of traits. Heck yes, girl. We have like the same story. This is crazy. <laughs> I'm like, I love when that happens. You're like, okay, this is a coincidence right here. It's so because... nice, isn't it? Right. To know that there's other people. Because like a lot of my clients originally were private equity. Um, and when I was saying that you need to mentor, you need to train, you need to... I felt like I was hitting my head against a brick wall. They were so different. And I was like, I'm not suiting a bit. I felt like I was forcing myself to act a certain way, to try and tell them stuff. And they were not seeing me. It's like I was transparent. So when you hear people like yourself talking about it, you're like, you get it too? Ah, oh, okay. This is great. <laughs> so, cool. so, yeah. Great. Oh, uh, I'm just uh, trying to hold my tongue because it's, it's I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm just so excited to listen to Kim speaking because uh, I was also diagnosed with PMDD before I got diagnosed with ADHD. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, of all the problems I had, I was like, so this is all you were able to find. <laughs> I have trauma. I have so much. Uh, but Not uh, bad, PMDD. Diagnosed me, yeah. Uh, PMDD. Yeah. And it's terrible to have that. Actually, it's a weird combination and horrible combination to have. And I have CPTSD as well. So, um, yeah. yeah. I think so it's like there's so more awareness for women. <laughs> Definitely. PMDD. Yeah. I used to suffer for about 10 to 14 days. And I do think that was the demise of my business because... For half the month, I'd be just not been able to cope, literally going, I'm going to quit and drinking red wine in the evening to cope. And then the next two weeks, I was coming up with ideas and literally working on speed. Um, and then I'd be back down to these two weeks of like, what am I going to do with myself? Um, so, yeah, about five years ago, I was diagnosed and and then I've been learning to take vitamins, strategies and things to help. But there was always still that problem. Um, so, yeah, I think. PMDDs and must be a massive link, I think, for women. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's it's such a condition that many women are uh, ignorant of, and uh, you know, it actually affects a lot of women, uh, especially premenopausal women, and uh, you know, it is uh, so overlooked. Uh, and uh, women with ADHD, I think we need a separate a uh, room or a club and we have so much to discuss actually and that is exactly what's been going on in my mind for a long time now it's, you know women have so many things to talk about that we are actually overlooking every day um, because men, women are being misdiagnosed so much and yeah like you know already but we are we have to put more focus into that you know here's a coincidence Go start the room. I always believe if you feel the pull, if you feel the call, maybe you're the one to start it. And that's how ADHD Rise started from the idea of us rising together and starting the movement and then coincidences and things happened and everything fell into place and here we are. So I, I do believe that, you know, if we're feeling that call to create something so often that's because we have that specific passion in our heart. So I would love to, if you start the room, we'll come support it. We'd love to do that. And of course, I, I love my women. I love my men too, but I, you know, I am a woman. So uh, I, I definitely get that, that there's, there's different qualities that show up for women in ADHD. So I love that idea. So I'm so excited to hear from Dan. I love that he just joined the ADHD Rise 
and I ask a question and I say, are you ready to play full out in this event? And he put, hell yeah. <laughs> I love it. What's up, Dan? How are you? Good, good. Just starting a, a busy week after a busy weekend. So trying to do a thousand things at once as usual. And, and that's not just because of the ADHD. It's also because I'm the solo founder of a tech startup. And uh, until I build out the team, I'm, I'm just wearing a lot of the hats. Um, and yeah, just, just wanted to, you know, I, I saw the ping on my phone that you guys were starting the, uh, the room now. So I thought I would just pop in to say hi. I'm Dan and I'm done. Awesome. Thank you for your support. And yes, Mondays are, yeah, when you're the solopreneur, man, it gets crazy. Someone just messaged me. is like, how many zoom calls do you have today? I'm like, well, zoom technically only one. Other commitments, 15,000. Not really, I'm exaggerating, but yes, love it. Glad you're here to, we can support you and you can start your week off awesome. So we are, if anyone did just pop in, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say like um, a quick potential win for this morning. Like um, I, I had a conversation, somebody who randomly connected with me on LinkedIn um, after the post that you were mentioning before where I, um, I, I used my 40th birthday as a reason to kind of like, you know, come out as ADHD to my whole LinkedIn network and to like all my social medias. Um, so I've been having a lot of people reaching out. Like I've, I've had like a couple of like really interesting, like one-on-one -on -one calls with people that I've known for years and, and like we never made the connection about ADHD. So they were coming out of the woodwork. So um, somebody, reached out and was actually telling me um, about, uh, for anybody who's Canadian, that there is something called the um, Registered Disability Savings Plan um, that is actually something that um, Canadians, uh, and, and you know, right now I'm trying to figure out whether ADHD qualifies, but I, I'm pretty sure that it does, um, where the government actually um, will contribute to a um like a, a savings plan that will help people who um who identify as a disability and, and meet the criteria to um like it'll, they'll contribute a thousand dollars a year to it and like match um any savings that you put in so 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 kind of like a ira i guess in the in the us um so yeah i'm, I'm just doing research about that right now uh, but I, I do, uh, you know, as soon as I figure out what the deal is, I want to tell all of my Canadian ADHDers that this might be something that could help them, you know, and they're um, to just make life a little bit easier. Heck yes. Thank you for that. I think that, you know, speaking of coincidences, that could be a coincidence for somebody out there. Maybe they're looking for some sort of resource and I always say, hey, if you can get free money, you know, like IRAs and stuff, if, especially if it's matched, holy cow, that's awesome. Go for it. You know, and if, if you do find that resource, we would love for you to share it in the Facebook group um, for ADHD Rise. We have some resources in there that we're sharing, people are sharing. So we'd love to know more. Absolutely. You know, I, I'm, I'm still coming to terms with like thinking about, you know, just like the word disability and disabled like it, it, it's still something that um it's taking me a little bit of time and uh you know just consideration to think about you know whether i feel that that word applies to me and and you know i and i'm aware that so much of that is just um based on hang-ups um that came from you know all these years of masking and you know not you know and being surrounded by uh you know, neurotypical people who didn't understand me, didn't understand my struggle. Um, and I'm, you know, just coming around to the, um, you know, being able to adopt that for myself um, and, you know, having free money um, that comes to the government as a result of, of taking on that designation is, is definitely helping it. So if um, I can, I, yeah, sorry. please go ahead. Yeah. If I can comment on that. So, um, ADHD is actually not a disability. I think on terms of like, when you like maybe government and money that may, that may help you to get that, I guess. But 
uh, in and of itself, um, if you if you look it up and read about it, um, there's a there's a lot of things. Most like fifty percent of those with ADHD have a co-occurring or like a comorbidity of some sort, and often that could be like dyslexia or um, so like ODD or um, some other type of like learning disability so um but in and of itself like i have adhd but i don't i don't have any other um i have depression and anxiety so that is a co-occurring condition but it isn't necessarily um something that that would that would define you as like disabled so there is a difference between it and um, yeah, you can, you can look that up or I can give you resources if that helps you. Like for me, the reason why I am, I am like, uh, maybe an advocate of making sure people know that is because my son is ADHD, but he doesn't have a, a, a learning disability and he doesn't have another like disability, like for the pure fact, if you want to take advantage of that, like that, I, I believe that the government may define it as that. Um, but like, even like in the DSM, it, it doesn't define it as a disability in and of itself. So just so, you know, I don't, I don't know if that helps you or not, or if that's something that, you know, whatever, just so you know, just for, are you talking about like for, okay. Sorry, I was just going to ask for clarity. Um, are you saying like for, as far as like mindset that helps because I, it is defined, it's considered a disability or um, maybe not disability, but you qualify for like social security with a disability. Right. It's from the I, government, right? Oh, okay. yeah. From the yeah. government. So you're just saying like for mindset, like it's not a disability. No, not even mindset. Even though it could fall under. Yeah. So it's not mindset. Okay. Like the, like the science, like if you, if you, um, yeah. okay. if you research that, like Google it, or if you go to attitudemag.com, they have like different articles, um, that talk about that from different professionals and educators. And so, um, yeah, so it's not necessarily just a mindset, although if that does help you like, you know, shift that, it does help you at like, you know, a personal level, like that's a great way to think. Um, but yeah, that's, um, the government does define it, I guess, as that. I know that in, um, I know that when I went to college, I did get money because I have ADHD um, and because we didn't have a lot of money. So, you know, the Pell Grants and whatever, but yeah, so I, I don't know. I just thought I would put that out there just so you would have that information and like process it however you want and however you want to think about it. So, yeah. I was going to say, uh, yeah, that totally makes sense. And I was just for clarity. Um, yes, yeah. it could qualify for benefits or something in your country but you're right. saying like it's not necessarily because I was going to say because like me identifying as like yeah I had an addiction I identify as an alcoholic like that could be a disability but I also just like Dan was saying I, I struggle with defining myself as that because I don't want to be in this thing forever or define myself as something and I finally just kind of had to come to this like mindset or release of right. letting go I, of what that absolutely means. yeah yeah Totally. And that's, yeah, it's like, I don't care what I am. If I'm an alcoholic, if I was just self-medicating with my ADHD, all I know is this girl should not drink and I do yeah. much better being a sober mind. Period. Right. So that's it's how I meaning. define it. It's the meaning so that we attach to the word, you know? So yeah. when we think of disability, go ahead, Dan, I want you to, I want you to be able to respond to yeah. what I said. Yeah. So go ahead. You know, I was just getting uh, clear. Yeah, I, 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 uh, you know, like, like there isn't anything like immediate that like I, I need to have an answer on this right now. Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of just like I've been thinking about it more recently because, you know, I have, um, you know, as I've started being more public about ADHD um, and you know, started, you know, interesting conversations with people, you know, I'm having um, people reach out to me from, you know, disability advocacy groups and and, um, you know, and, and just starting to have this conversation. And, um, you know, it, it's just really like I'm just at the beginning of this thought process about like, you know, do I consider myself to have a, uh, like an intellectual disability? Um, you know, I, and I don't, you know, if, if it's something where, you know, um, including myself in that conversation allows me to be a better advocate or it allows me to maybe 
you know, just personally qualify for benefits where it's not going to take things away from other people who, you know, who may be struggling more, um, then I'm all for it. Um, right, but, you know, right. I, I, I feel, I feel like we could have, you know, like there, there could be a, a great subject for like a whole room, maybe. It to just totally is. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to correct myself because I just looked it up again. And for some reason I did look it up the other day. So it does say under both the ADA and another law known as the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, which we know about, ADHD is considered a disability in the United States, but with very strict stipulations. So, uh, yes, so there are, and, and that really is, for an employee who has ADHD, the act can require the employer to provide reasonable accommodations. And I think that's why it is defined as, it. It is not considered to be a learning disability. I think that's what I I was reading about. So it can be determined to be a disability under um, the Individuals with Disability uh, that Education Act. So yes, so actually it is considered a disability, not a learning disability. So yes, okay. <laughs> I love go. this I, topic. This is amazing. Thank you guys is. for helping. For I see it as a disability. That's what I think people i think it's the words you use the right the, in the attachment the, the attachment yeah. to it that we have of the word itself yeah so yeah so i think if if you see it as a, a disability you know it's a case of like we just think differently we just process information differently and i think because there's so much talk about it being a disorder and a disability we start thinking that and there's all this stigma and this shame but you know we get our words, you know, define our feelings, don't they? So we get to choose. So if obviously what you're saying is you get money from the government, yes, that's different. But how you say it yourself, it's whoever you think, you know, otherwise, if someone else calls might, might have such a hard time, they'll give them tell say they've got a disability. But you know yourself if it's a big disability for you. But I just see it really as a you know, a different way of thinking. Um, and it's a massive strength. And I think companies are missing out on hiring people who are neurodivergent because, you know, we offer so much really. Like, you know, we're relentless when we hyper focus, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely. Hyper focus is like my superpower, but it's also like my downfall. <laughs> like, yeah, hours. It's seriously, yes, hours and hours of working like on my website. And I'm like, okay, the colors have to be exactly right. You know what I'm saying? Like I have yes. to have brand colors. Like this can't be like that. Like the call to action button all has to be red because that's consistent. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, some things it's just worth like, hiring out uh, i mean honestly if we if we're going in that direction a little bit like it, it's often difficult to do those things um because we hyper focus so much that it, it often makes it difficult but then it's like a superpower too so yeah i mean i love i love love that comment so yeah, yeah i stand true. totally corrected because i was like no it's not no it's not but really it, it is defined as such but i think i was reading about the learning disability part like uh, i think it's like 30 percent of of kids at least with adhd also have a learning disability so that that was interesting to me as well because i know i never was defined as having a learning disability but my adhd did um in some ways if we don't attach the scary meaning of disability it did disable me from um doing well on tests because i had test anxiety in addition to having adhd which my working memory is very weak that's one of the executive functions that i really struggle with so i, I mean if we if we look at it that way it it does disable us whether we like it or not to be able to perform at, you know, high quality or not high quality, but peak, you know, like the best that we can. So, yeah. So maybe I just need to get over my attachment to that word. It really, it actually is my emotional connection with the, the word itself. So yeah. What a good conversation. I'm loving it. One, one more um, bit of flavor to add to that conversation. Yes, and, and like, you know, 
de definitely let me know if, if you guys, um, you know, want to have somebody, uh, you know, if, if you decide to like turn this into a, the subject of a room one day, one day like definitely let me know. I'd, I'd be happy to, to help you, you know, even like co mod the conversation. Um, I feel like the, the entire, like this conversation about the intersectionality of, of identity these days is, um, you know, disability is, is kind of like one of the categories in, you know, in a lot of diversity and inclusion and inclusion statements at, um, at a lot of companies. Um, it's, but neurodiversity is not really specifically called out. And so like on the career section for my website, like I, I actually made a point of specifically listing neurodiversity um, when I talk about how we want to be an equal opportunity employer for people across all these other categories of identity. And, uh, you know, so for myself as a, as a straight white guy, um, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm very aware of my privilege um, and how, you know, it, it may have, you know, even as I was like struggling to perform in multiple jobs before I eventually got fired, um, I feel like I, I kept on getting a lot of extra chances that, you know, that may have definitely been contributed to the fact that I, I don't face some of these other, um, you know, challenges that, that are associated with other identities. Um, and now I'm, you know, kind of struggling with this decision of like, do I, you know, because, you know, I, I, just, I turned 40, I'm like way behind, you know, most of the people I went to school with and, you know, like my, my peer group, like financially, my family is, is like, basically as, it's as if I just got out of university <laughs> um, because of some of the, the financial challenges uh, in my career up to this point. Um, and so I, I know that, that like, I didn't have those challenges because I was straight or white or, or male, um, but I still experience those challenges, like, because of, um, you know, the undiagnosed ADHD and how it had affected my life. And so now I'm trying to figure out, like, you know, in these very sensitive times, like, you know, what's the most appropriate way to, like, have that conversation and, you know, and present myself. So definitely very interested in, in continuing this conversation, but I, I didn't want to derail um, the other conversations that you guys were planning on having today. Oh my gosh, no, this is rich. Like, I loved that you that you pointed that out in really such an eloquent way because there is, there's so, like, like there's this intersection, you know, of, um, I don't know, you said it, you said it way better than I could, you know, of like who we are and how we feel and like what the outside influence is and what and what we receive from those outside influences. So, oh, I love, love how you said that. And I think, and I think it's important to remember we attach so much meaning. Um, and I, I work with parents on this all the time. So like we attach so much meaning to what it means to, um, you know, graduate from high school. Like granted, I tell them, you know, I tell my child, you got to play the game. Like he hates school. He has all these absences and apparently he's been skipping fifth period. <laughs> he went from last year, you know, doing all online and doing not the school system uh, or the school district. He actually did like an, just an online thing that you could, you know, just do your work. And it didn't matter if you were there, you know, if you wanted to be there or not, like you just, handed in your assignments, did the stuff. So he went from having a lot of freedom to like no freedom. Right. So, um, it's hard for him to like sit in the classroom. So anyways, um, Oh crap. Now I lost my train of thought. Does anyone remember what I was saying? Oh, the intersection between like who we are and how we are. So we, we attach this meaning to like graduating from high school, getting our diploma, um, going to college. And when we can drop the meaning behind or like the, um, the ideas that have been formed from society of what is right and what is wrong and really get down to what do you actually feel is appropriate. I call that standard-based living. So you base your life on what your standards are 
as a person, as a family, as an individual, instead of saying, okay, well, all these other kids are going to college. This is what you do. You freaking go to college. You graduate from high school and you go to college. Um, that's how I was raised. I went to college. Was it a waste of time? No, not necessarily, but you know, it taught me a lot of good, like hard work and ethics and those types of things. But you have to decide like how you are going to, um, live your life. Where are your standards? What, what is it that's going to get you to where you need to be, you know? And so like with you, Dan, what is it that you need to be successful? Like only you can figure that out. You know, you can figure that out with, you know, like a professional, somebody that can help you or a coach or something, but you know, whatever you need, um, is what is most important, not what other people need, you know? So, I mean, I think it's, it goes, um, it's, it goes to say like, um, in your situation, like you feel like, okay, I didn't have the things that I needed to be successful because I had, um, this disability that, you know, prevented me from being successful. So now you, now, you know, so whether you get help or not from like government or whatever, like only, you know, what number one, what your standards are, what your values are, how that affects you. And then number two, like, um, what you actually need to move forward, you know, because sometimes, sometimes it's as simple as putting a name to the face, you know, when, when you can say, okay, yeah, I have ADHD, all of these things are contributed to it, but not disabling yourself and not saying just because I have this, I can't do this, but finding a way to make it work and what works for you and not, you know, not what works for other people. Um, and like, you know, societal norms, um, everyday things that, you know, work for some people don't work for us. And it's like that with anybody, you know, who has, um, some type of different like brain and learning differently. So, or disability, which I apparently am scared of that word. I'm going to admit it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's my, that's my thoughts on that. But I think it'd be a fantastic room. I think that's a great idea, Dan. We have it in the works, girl. This will be continued. And you know, it's so funny because welcome to ADHD Rise, anyone that just popped in. So excited to have you. And we started this conversation talking about coincidences, right? I've had several conversations this week about, um, yeah, it's just come up over and over and over to go to New York. And so I'm like, is this a coincidence or what, you know, what's happening here? I keep hearing go to New York when I'm praying for an answer and I keep hearing this, like go to New York, go to New York, go to New York. <laughs> so I don't know. And you know, it's so funny that the coincidence, oh darn it, Priscilla left. I was going to have her speak real quick, but um, the coincidence of us having this room and then this conversation coming up is so cool because it is definitely something that is very rich and very valuable that we could go, I mean, I think this could be like a three hour room. <laughs> we'll definitely like try and rein it in a little bit, but um, yeah, let's, we're, let's schedule it. I'm, uh, I messaged Dan in the back channel and Summer, you know, of course you're always welcome to, I'd love for you to be a part of this conversation and anyone else that's interested, let me know. We will definitely, um, you know, gather some information and resources that will be very helpful around the conversation of, um, you know, defining disability, defining ADHD, um, mindset, um, technicalities, because it does, you know, kind of shifts from, um, country to country, even, you know, I know there's, it's really hard in like, um, Australia and New Zealand to even get a, a diagnosis, much less, you know, define yourself as ADHD. So this is a great conversation. I'm super excited to continue it. So watch this room. We'll be, we'll be there. We'll do it. Or club. Um, I always say room. Hey, I mean club. Bro. Yeah. Uh, so can I just uh, give a quick shout out to the club, uh, to my, I just want to promote the room so that more women can join and uh, join the room on Thursday that I created. Uh, so yeah, I have a, a club called Neuro Neurodivergent Club and uh, I have, uh, yeah, as like many people follow me there. Uh, but I haven't scheduled much rooms there uh, because I'm spending most of the time with all these amazing people here. So I just want to uh, have a separate room for ADHD in women. 
so i just uh, i started a I mean, I'm scared. I scheduled a uh, room on Thursday, 11:30 a.m. CDT. So please, I just invite invite everyone here uh, to uh, join me there, and men are welcome. And we're going to talk about ADHD in women and the comorbidities and how we navigate life, ADHD style. So, yeah, I'm Gayatri. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, guys, um, if you are called to do that, hop on over there. Also, um, or you can come here in the room and listen to me rock it out and teach you how to rock out your business, but you know, it's your choice. Um, I <laughs> want to just say thank you guys for <laughs> the same time I'm talking, I'm sharing about business and ADHD. So, I mean, you know, that's breaks my heart. Cause I want to be there. I want to support you. Um, but that's when I'm going to be sharing. So I won't be able to be there, which is too uh, bad. I am yeah. so sorry. I just thought uh, it was just a random impulsive uh, start, you know that. Oh and, my gosh, uh, we never I... do that. ADHD never does random impulsive things. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, uh, Val and Summer, I would love for you guys to be there. And the thing is, uh, starting next week, I have a, a continuous therapy plan for me. So uh, that's why I'll be busy for a month. I don't know what time yet. So uh, that's the reason I started it next week. I mean, I scheduled it this week. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no worries. Girl, there's no competition. We're all about the collaboration here. And that's why we are ADHD Rise. When I rise, you rise. We, we rise, rise together. together. <laughs> I love you guys. So I do. We. I need to hop out. Um, we have in this club... We have Chris Ostrom talking about NFTs. If that's something you guys are interested in, definitely hop on over to that conversation. Um, we got in this like total nerd out conversation the other day about NFTs. And as you guys all know, my girl Summer here coined a new term, NFT, neuro fucking typical. <laughs> I just thought Brett didn't even say out. that word. So I was like, neuro fucking typical. <laughs> <laughs> It was hilarious. So watch for the t-shirts and the hats. We'll have them very soon. You can rock an NFT or an NFD diverse. Yeah. Um, and then later today at 1.30 PM Pacific time, we have Karen. She's so funny. Her brand is all around. Like I'm not that Karen. Cause we all know like Karen. Um, I'm not that Karen. She's going to be talking about marketing and branding for authors. So if you've ever wanted to write a book, if you thought about writing a book, or if you just want to come hang out and learn from her, her name's Karen Happel. She is amazing. She will be here at 1.30 Pacific time, and then we will be back tomorrow. So you guys, I love you so much. Thanks for hanging out, for holding space in this room. Thank you to everyone who joined in on the conversation and keep an eye out for our, our next big room with Dan and Summer. And we're going to be talking about you know, identifying with um, disabilities, all that, that will be scheduled very soon, I'm sure. And Summer, do you have anything else? No, thanks everyone for being here. It's been fantastic. I I love, love the conversations that evolve just, you know, and it's like not coincidental or it is coincidental, however you want to see it. I think that it happens for a reason. So I think that, that that's definitely part of it. So thanks everyone for being here. Go to ADHD Rise and sign up so you can have so access to the replays. Hey, bye, everyone. We love you. Bye.